Y'all know who that is? Take a look at her. And she is one of the most pioneering journalists that the world has ever seen. She was a tough... <laughs> Boy, she was so... She was so strong during an era where black folk were so beat down. And Ida B. Wells, with her pen, proved to everybody that it was mightier than the sword. She really took black folks' plight, um, the injustice that they were serving at the hands of white people, and she put it in a most eloquent, pioneering, real way that they eventually put a price on her head like they did Harriet Tubman because she was so influential in some of her writings. Um, um, one of the things that Ida B. wrote about and a lot of folk don't want to even acknowledge that happened it's really sad because when white folk don't want to deal with history, then we have a hard time um, getting to the heart of the matter of things, basically. So what we have to do is we have to be very open and very honest and hoping that healing takes place because it can't go back to this. I don't know anybody in their right mind to think that this is what, in fact, that it won't go back to this. Because here's what happened on a chilling night when 300 homes were burnt in a massacre in East St. Louis. And she wrote about it. It was a night of killing, rioting, during which at least 21 Negroes and three whites were known to have been killed. 74 Negroes injured and more than 300 Negro homes were burned. And that was followed by early Tuesday by a comparative calm after 1,500 Illinois National Guardmen had taken charge of this city. Unconfirmed reports place the number of dead as high as 250. Burning of Negro homes began immediately after dark Monday night. The mobs went from section to section applying the torch and shooting down Negroes as they fled from their burning homes. Many Negroes fell back into the flames. The story is told of a Negro who ran through the streets with his clothes aflame and died amid the cheers of hundreds of white people. White women and girls took active part in the violence of the mobs as well, pulling Negro women by the from the streetcars and attacking others as they sought refuge on the Missouri side of the river by crossing the bridges into St. Louis. The white women used clubs, shoes, and all sorts of weapons to beat the Negro women. And not even the aged or women with babies in their arms were spared. So I, I need y'all to understand um, what the law allowed these people to do to us. And that if you don't, if you got a group of people who don't, have any value in the human family and believe what they have been taught which is that we're inferior to them remember they've been allowed to beat us for centuries and centuries and centuries they even started a war so they could keep beating us and using us so it's real hard for them to let us go and the slave catchers has have evolved to the police departments. 
And until we understand what we're up against, really, I'm talking about for real, for real, for real. I don't see any end in sight to the to the to the massacre, basically. One crowd went about the streets shouting, let's get Malman. He's the man that brought him in. Let's lynch the mayor. The cry was raised because of a false rumor that Mayor Malman went south and advertised that Negro labor will be, paid, will be well paid in East St. Louis. The mayor visited New Orleans and confirmed with railroad heads and others to discourage Negroes from coming. Another of the innumerable brutal incidents was the attack on a young negress. That's a black woman, y'all, in case you didn't know. White men and white women were among the assailants. Let the woman have her was the cry among the men and the white women began tearing the garments from the victim. The negress cried, please, please, I ain't done nothing was stopped by a blow in the mouth with a club. Another white woman seized the victim's hands and the blow was repeated. The fingers tore at her hair and her waist was stripped from her. Now let's see how fast she can run, suggested a bystander as the Negro broke loose. The women were loath to leave her alone, but... After following her with their blows for a short distance, they stopped, and she ran crying down the middle of the street. The women next tried to get an aged negress who was guarded by three militiamen. One of them wrestled with the soldier for his rifle, and others succeeded in getting in a few blows. The rioting Monday night was the culmination of a series of disturbances in which the killing of a policeman and the wounding of two others by Negroes the night before. The real cause of the riots was the labor change resulting from the unusual influx of Southern Negroes into East St. Louis. I'm giving you a little history, uh, Darius Miles, uh, East St. Louis. Because they show proud of you down in East St. Louis. Anyway. And uh, Alfonso. What's the, Alfonso Ellis? It's another one. The fires set by the moms in five sections of the Negro Quarter spread to the railroad yards and the downtown district, destroying more than 200 loaded freight cars valued at more than 100000 and many other structures. Through the combined efforts of the St. Louis and East St. Louis Fire Departments, the fires were brought under control. Although the mayor of this city had requested it, General Dixon said that for the present martial law would not be established. The soldiers are patrolling the city and have established a detention camp for which 500 rioters have been made prisoners Tuesday morning. One result of the fires was to plunge sections of the city into darkness and surgeons at hospitals and the emergency operating rooms were forced to do their work while policemen held flashlights or candles over the tables. Dr. Thomas Barney. Kansas City representative of the Red Cross arrived to direct relief work among Negroes whose home had been burned. He arranged quarters for several hundred Negroes but has no provisions which, with which to feed them. A large number, a large automobile truck has been touring the city removing wounded Negroes and taking them to hospitals and Dr. Barnage estimates that the number of injured will be increased two score by two score. The causes underlying the disturbances are um, of interest to many northern communities where the Negro labor has been brought in from the south to replace men enlisted in the army or who have 
been tempted to, to other sections by the high wages paid in munition factories. In East St. Louis, with a population of about 84,000 persons, there was already a large Negro colony with influx increased by a portion to a great extent. Unrest among the whites smoldered and even flared up last May when in a small riot three Negroes were shot, wounded, and a number were beaten, but feeling did not run high as the Negroes were merely filing, filling vacancies, not taking the places of white men. And with the arrival of soldiers, quiet was quickly restored. Race antagonism, however, remained. Real estate men attempted to obtain a permit from the city council to build an addition to the Negro settlement, but after a bitter light, the project was defeated. The incident served to intensify feeling against uh, to intensify the feelings against the blacks. Petty crime is said to have increased disease as well. The whites began to feel that they would be saddled with all undesirable elements for all time. Recently, labor agitators stirred up the inflammable followers. It sounds like what, what, what goes on now, don't it? And isn't that, isn't that kind of like what, what happens today? Or is happening today? I mean... When they call this the bloodiest summers, I mean, there were so many race riots. The authentic story of the East St. Louis massacre is obtained from reliable sources at St. Louis. This is a complete story. I mean, made up of people from people who were there, who survived. Club shot, stoned to death, and roasted alive amid the ruins of their homes, while blood-mad riflemen stood outside and sent leading missiles of death at each one of those who ventured to seek the uncertainty safety of the open. At least 38 and probably more Negroes were killed by the rioters in East St. Louis that Monday night. Why the police allowed it? Y'all think this can't happen again? You think it won't happen again? This is the destruction of a civilization. These proud boys, these oath keepers, they're nothing but evolved, a uh, some, somewhat evolved um, uh, uh, sectors of the Ku Klux Klan. That's all this is. Anyways, I'll be back with another story, especially among Black History Month, Black History Year for us, because we better wake our dumb asses up. I'll see y'all in the next video.